All right, so this is chapter three. We're going to be covering the student structures and Boolean logic today. Here are all of the topics that we're going to cover today. I'll check with the time and see if I will be able to cover all of these in one video. If, if not, I'll just record the rest for you and I'll post it in e-learning. All right, so just a little recap um, about a couple of terms that you, you need to be familiar with. So first of all, control structure. Control structure is just the way how your statements execute. Whenever you um, write them down in your compiler, <clears throat> control structure is the order in which your statements will execute. In Python, they just execute line by line. So the lines at the top go first, and as they go down, that's the way they're going to execute. Then the sequence structure is a set of statements. And this is just basically your code. So the actual code that you write, that's called the sequence structure. And then the decision structures <clears throat> is our if else uh, structure. So I'm going to show you that later. So whenever we write our flowcharts, a little recap from PLD 101 flowcharts, the diamond will represent a true false condition. So that, that diamond will have two different ways how your program can go. And let me show you that. This is what it looks like. This is just a simple decision structure with true or false. There's only two ways how your program can go. And in this example, so if it's called outside, then it's going to be executed to true. And then something's going to happen. In this case, wear a code. And then we're going to just exit the decision structure. If it's not called outside, your program will just continue carrying on with how uh, with the flow of the code. Now, in Python, when we write our code in Python, it's a little bit different from any other language. So you say uh, you put if first, whenever we write our if statement, we put if the code word, and then whatever condition that needs to be evaluated, it's going to be evaluated either to true or false. And then after you put a column and you put whatever statements you want to be executed, if this condition is true right here, if this condition is true, then all of these statements will be executed. Uh, let me click. real quick, my pen. All right. So the first line, this line right here is called the if clause, the official name, but I just like to call it if structure, if statement, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, the keyword if the main thing, and then whatever condition and whatever you want your code to execute of that condition evaluates to true. Now, another recap, Boolean expressions. So Boolean expressions, it's the actual, what we put in our conditions after the if. So this example is A is greater than B. So this Boolean expression will evaluate to true if whatever is stored in A is greater than B and otherwise is gonna be evaluated to false. And the <clears throat> this little arrow looking thing is called a relational operator. And there's a bunch of them in Python. Let me show you the table right here. So these are all uh, Boolean expressions that are using relational operators in Python. So this one is greater than, this one is less than, then this one is greater than or equal. This is obviously less than or equal. Then the doubles uh, equal sign is the equal to. So whenever you want to check if two numbers are equal and the exclamation point and a Equal sign will evaluate to not equal. So all of these are gonna be tested for either true or false. Now, whenever we are using greater than or equal and less than or equal, uh, they are checking for more than um, one relationship basically. So they check if that number is greater than the number on the right. And also it's checking if that number is equal to the number on the right. So just, be aware that these two are checking for more than one relationship. Now, the double equal sign, as I told you before, just determines if two operands are equal to each other or not. And this one checks for whether they are not equal. So pretty simple, nothing too complicated. This is another example in the flowchart. So if our sales are greater than 50,000, then it's going to be evaluated to true and whoever 
did those sales are going to receive a bonus of 500. However, if those sales are less than 5,000, we're skipping this whole part. We're skipping it as a whole and we're just moving on with our code. Now let's look at, yeah, any kind of relational operator from that table that I showed you can be used in your decision block. So for to check your condition, in this case, we're checking if balance equals zero, but you can also check if payment does not equal balance, does not matter. You can use any kind of relational operators that are available to you. It is also possible to stack the two if, um, if structures, you just have to make sure if you want to stack them, you have to make sure that they make sense by stacking them together. So something needs to be checked first. And then after that evaluates to true, something else needs to be checked. Just make sure that you're using them logically. You can also in Python write an if statement on one line. So you know how in Java you have to actually make an indentation and you have to put curly braces and all of that information inside of a statement block. In Python, you do not have to do that if uh, you only have one if statement. So this is the syntax for doing that. So you're going to put your keyword if, then you're going to insert your condition, whatever it is. Then you're going to put a colon and whatever uh, you want to be executed. In this example, we have if our score is greater than 59, we're printing you passed. So this is just another example on how to do if structures. However, it, you can only do it if you have just one if statement. Now let's talk about the next uh, level of our if statement is if else statement. So in this case, we are providing an alternative decision to our structure. So basically, if this condition that we have right here evaluates to false, we are not just skipping right to the rest of our code. We are skipping to the else structure. So whatever is right here, whatever is inside of our else structure, is going to be executed if this condition right here that we have, it evaluates to false. So this is just a way to provide your code with uh, an alternative decision, alternative uh, way for your code to work. Let's see, this is an example in a flowchart. So just so it's easier to visualize, easier to see. So we have, this is our code. Just pretend that we had some statements right here, some code, and we get to our decision structure, right? If else. So we have our condition is temperature is less than 40. If the temperature is less than 40, then our code will follow this arrow right here and print a little cold, isn't it? And then it's just going to continue with the execution as per usual. However, if our temperature is less than 40 evaluates to false, so if the temperature is more than 40 degrees, then we're going to follow this line right here because this condition is false. And we're going to print nice weather we are having. So this is just the way if else statements work in Python. This is just to visualize it and show you guys how it works. Now, uh, this is just another example of how using the actual code. So if we have some condition and some statements that we want to execute. However, after that, you need to put else and whatever statement you want to execute. You can also compare strings in Python and it's way easier than comparing strings in Java. All you need to do is just put a double equal sign if you want to check if two strings are identical, or if you want to check if they're not identical, you're just going to use the not equal operator. You could also compare strings using your greater than, less than, less than, or greater than or equal, and less than or equal oper operators. And those are compared a little bit differently than everywhere else. And let's do a little recap about ASCII values. So if you do not remember, ASCII is the way how the English characters are encoded in um, the binary system. So ASCII values, uh, they are assigned to each character that you see uh, when you type your code in Python. And each character will have a certain number referred to it. And in this case, whenever you're comparing strings in Python, this is exactly what your compiler is going to look at. It's going to look at the ASCII values if you're comparing strings. So in this case, 
it's going to look at, if we're comparing Mary and Mark, it's going to look at the first character of each word, and it's going to see if they have the same ASCII value. In this case, they do. It's going to move on to the next one. It's going to look at the next one. They have the same ASCII value. Move on to the next one. R, have the same. And then it's going to come down to the last character, Y and K. And Y has a greater ASCII value than K. So if you wanted to do Mary is greater than Mark, then this expression will evaluate to true because the last character of Mary has a bigger value than the last character of Mark in the ASCII table. All right. Now you can also do the nested decision structures and that is just adding more conditions to your decision structure. So instead of just having if and else, you can do if L if else, and L if is just stands for else if. So basically you're just providing your code with another way to execute uh, some code, another way to check a condition. For example, in this we have determine if someone qualifies for a loan, they must meet two conditions, earn at least 30,000 a year, must have been employed for at least two years. So then we're going to check the first condition first, if they're earning 30,000 per year. And after that, if it's true, we're going to check the second condition, if uh, they have been employed for at least two years. Now, let me show you what that looks like in a decision structure. So our first check that we do is our, if our salary is greater than or equal to $30,000. If it's not, we immediately exit our code and we just type, you must earn at least 30,000 per year to qualify. However, if this condition is true, then we need to check for the next step in our condition, right? Years on the job should be greater than or equal to two. And in this case, we're just following this true uh, arrow and we're coming down to our next decision structure, years on the job greater than or equal to two. If this evaluates to true, we're following this arrow and we're printing you qualify for the loan. However, if it's false, we just print, you must have been on your current job for at least two years to qualify. And we are ex exiting our program the same way as we would exit it from our first false statement. You have to use proper indentation uh, with your nested decision structures. It shouldn't be a problem with for you though, because all of your coding exercises are gonna be in Pearson Revel. So it does indentation automatically for you. Uh, let's see. This is the syntax, the actual syntax in Python, how you would check it. So it's the same thing as using if else. The only thing that's different is we're adding one more keyword, L if. That's all there is, we're checking, we're still putting our conditions, we're still putting our statement, we're still putting our colon right here. So nothing um, nothing too complicated. The only thing to watch out for is that you're using a different word instead of just if. Let's see. Yeah, alignments, they have to be aligned, obviously, and this is what they mean by aligned. They all should be on the same line. As you can see, no indentation anywhere except with the statements, and statements need to be indented. This is just an example of how you would check for somebody's grade if you would want it to code... Uh, just to determine your student's grade. So this is how it would look like. If the score is greater than 90, print your grade as A. However, if it's not, we're moving on to our next one. Right here, we're moving on to our next statement. If the score is greater than 80, print B. If it's not, move on to the next one. C, then 60. And if it's less than 60, we're going to print your grade as F. So this is just the way uh, your flowchart will look like if you wanted to code that. Now, logical operators, also you should be familiar with those already. We have three. We have and operator, or operator, and are not operator. So these two, uh, these three logical operators, they're useful for connecting uh, multiple Boolean expressions. Usually it's just two. However, not always that is the case. If you want to connect more Boolean expressions into one statement, you can also do that. And let me show you an example for that. So AND operator works, uh, basically you have one expression that you want to be evaluated, either to true or false. And then you have a second expression that needs to be evaluated to either true or false. 
And if you connect those two with an AND operator, this is what's going to happen. If your two expressions are false and false, the whole value of that expression is still going to be false. If your expression, first expression in value is to false and the second in value is to true, it is still going to be all evaluated to false. The same way if you flip them, if your first one in value is to true and the second one to false, the whole value is going to be false. And the only case how you can get your AND Boolean expression to be evaluated to true is only if your two Boolean expressions are both evaluating to true. So the only thing that you need to know about the AND operator, if you're combining the two expressions, both of them have to be true for your big expression, the overall expression, to be evaluated to true. The OR operator is a little bit different. Uh, the OR operator, how I look at it, how I memorized it, is the only case where the OR operator will not be evaluated to true if both of your conditions are false. So this is the way I like to look at it. It's just easier for me to remember. Uh, so AND operator only evaluates to true if both conditions are true, and OR operator only evaluates to false if both of the conditions are false. In every other case, they're evaluated to true. Now, in Python, there's such thing as short circuit evaluation. And what that means is fairly simple for the OR operator. If your condition that's on the left is true, the second one is not even being checked. Because, as I told you before, the OR operator only evaluates to false if both of the expressions are false. So if it checks your first expression and it looks at it and it evaluates to true, automatically your OR uh, structure is going to be evaluated to true. So this is what it mean, what it's means by saying short circuit evaluation. We're just not even checking the second one because either way, our whole condition is going to be evaluated to true. Now, when it comes to AND, it's a little bit different. It's the opposite. If your first um, condition is false, we're not even going to check the second one because we know that for our AND expression to be evaluated to true, both of the expression needs to be evaluated to true. So if your first one is false, your compiler will not even bother to check the second one. Automatically, the whole thing is going to be evaluated to false. All right, not operator, not really simple. If you have an expression, just flip it. So we have two values, true or false. If you have an expression that evaluates to true and you want to use the not operator on it, it's going to be flipped to false. If you want to use uh, it on the false condition, it's going to be evaluated to true. So we just literally just flip the logical value of that expression. Now, this is how you would check the ranges. Uh, of the number using your logical operators. For example, in this case, if you want to check if the number is within a certain range, range of uh, numbers, we are using the AND operator. So if x is greater than 10 and x is less than or equal to 20, then this number will be within the range of 10 and 20. However, if we want to determine if a value is outside of the range, we're using OR. So we're checking if x is less than 10 or if x is greater than 20, then our number is within uh, outside of the range. So just the thing to remember, if you want to check if the number is within a range, we use AND. If you want to check if number is outside of the range, we're using OR. All right, Boolean variables. Boolean variables are also available to you in Python. They're represented by bool data type. However, Remember that in Python, we do not need to specify any data types. So in, in Python, it's automatically assigned. Your, your compiler will automatically understand what you're trying to do, unless uh, unlike Java, because in Java, you need to specifically put the data type of each variable. You do not have to do that in Python. This is just for your own, own knowledge that Boolean variables are represented by bool data type in Python. Let's see our syntax value. All right, we have also conditional expressions in Python, and that's the thing that is new. So we just done, we're done with our recap. This is a couple of slides left, eight slides left. This is kind of the new thing, kind of what just Python has. 
that you probably haven't seen in any other language. And uh, this just checks, this is all on one line. So this is the syntax for your conditional expression. And what it's gonna do, uh, it's simply your if else statement, but written on one line. So let me show you an example of that because it's just easier to understand. So we are assigning our grade variable to pass if our score is greater than 59. However, if it's not, we put else and we assign it to fail. So this conditional expression lets you assign certain variables to your values automatically without writing all of that big piece of code with the if, else, assign, assign. You don't have to do that. This is the way to do it in Python. So you can immediately assign some sort of variable, uh, some sort of value to your variable. See, this is the equivalent of that one line, this is how you would have to rewrite it. However, in this case, it's just all on one line looking neat and just takes less space in your code. Same, same example, we have a variable called max and we are assigning it to some sort of number. We don't, we don't know what the number is, but we're assigning it to some sort of number. If that number is greater than number two, however, if it's not, we are assigning it to number two. And this is the equivalent of uh, this statement right here. This is the equivalent of the if else structure. So if number one is greater than number two, max equals number one, else max equals number two. So instead of writing four lines of code, you can put it all on one line. Now, there's such thing as the walrus operator. You probably will never use it. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I've never used it, but this is just something that you need to be familiar with. This is the thing that Python provides. That It's built in Python. And walrus operator is uh, made to create assignment expression. And what that is, it's just basically you're going to assign some sort of value to your variable. And this is what it's going to look like. So as you can see, it looks kind of funky. It looks a little bit weird. We're printing some sort of number. And then we have this colon and an equal sign 99. So if you look at it in the first, from the first uh, glance, you might think, like, what is this? This looks weird. However, all it does is assigns 99 to this number right here. And also at the same time, it prints the value that was assigned to the variable num. So that's all it's gonna do. Let me show you a bigger example. And why we would want to use this walrus operator? Well, if you want to make your life a little bit harder and you code a little bit harder to understand, you are welcome to use the walrus operator uh, inside of your if statements. Uh, however, I would not recommend it, but I have to teach you about this. So if uh, what we have in this example, we have an, just a simple if structure. If our area equals width multiplied by height and is greater than 100, then we're going to print the area is too large. So what happens right here inside of these parentheses is we are multiplying width by height and we're also assigning it to our area variable. So we are creating our area variable and we are assigning some sort of number to it inside of our if structure. So this just saves you one line of code. Instead of doing this, you could have just done area equals width multiplied by height uh, before your if structure. And then instead of doing this inside, we would just get rid of this whole thing and we would use just the word area. So this is what it would look like. Uh, let me. So this is what we would be checking if area is greater than 100. So this is the only difference. You are just assigning some variable to area inside, some value to area inside of your if decision structure. This is all walrus operator does. However, the one thing to know about the walrus operator is that it cannot exist alone. It has to exist as a part of a larger statement. So either you have to put it in your print statement or if you're inside of your if decision structure or else decision structure, it does not matter. It cannot just work by itself. It's made to be put inside of a larger statement. That's all you need to know. 
Uh, yeah, so this was it. This is all we covered. So we covered the decision structure, single, dual, and nested decision structures. Just a little recap. Single decision structure, just your if, nothing else, just if. Dual alternative decision structure is your if and else. If you have if and else, that's a dual alternative structure. Nested decision structure, that's where we get our L if. Well, when you add your L if, that's called a nested decision structure. Now we also cover relational operators and logical operators. There's a table uh, at the beginning of this PowerPoint. If you want to go over that, the PowerPoint is posted in the e-learning. And we also covered string comparison. One string to remember about the string comparisons, the ASCII values of each character is being compared. So not the lengths of the string, not the characters of the string, but each character and their ASCII values. Those things are being compared. And I showed you Boolean variables. So yeah, this was it. Let me stop the recording.